It's none of my business, then, as you say. I believe your elevator's here. Going down. What she think was so funny? Pardon? Nothing. Did you find what you were looking for? As a matter of fact, I did. Excellent. Also, as a matter of fact, it was the only thing for sale on that floor. You don't say. Somebody ought to hire an efficiency expert or something. Oh, dear. One entire floor devoted to the sale of a single gold thimble. And an extremely odd sales lady. Somebody ought to look into her while they're at it. Odd, you say? You don't believe me? See for yourself. A very nice choice. Wait, this is scratched. I didn't notice. I can't send this to my mother. It's scratched terribly and dented, too. You see here? Main floor. Just look at this thing. It's scratched and it looks like somebody stepped on it. Main floor. Sit down, Mr. Armbruster. You make me nervous. But I'm only trying to explain... Can't we cut through all this? You're in charge of the floor. You're supposed to handle any problems. I have a department store to run here. I know that, Mr. Sloan, sir. I distinctly told her that... What's I... your point? Uh, that all the gold thimbles we have would be in gifts. And that if the item is in its original packaging, we would make good on it, either by replacement or refund. I distinctly told her that, Mr. Sloan. Then what's the problem, Mr. Armbruster? The problem is that the customer claims she didn't get the item in gifts. She got it in another department. Then have her go to the department where she purchased the item. You know the policy. Oh, that's the point, Mr. Sloan. She has some idiotic story about having purchased the gold thimble on the ninth floor. Ninth. That's what she said over and over again. I trust you explained to her, Mr. Armbruster, that this store doesn't have a ninth floor? I tried, sir. Lord knows I tried. Mr. Sloan, believe me, I have tried desperately, and I really mean desperately, to acquaint her with that fact. But she insists she was taken up to the ninth floor, waited on by a rather odd woman. An odd woman, no less. A personality trait she would be particularly knowledgeable about. Well, at any rate, a woman who allegedly waited on her... Never and... mind, Mr. Armbruster. I'll talk to her. Thank you, sir. She's right outside. Miss White. Oh, there you are. This is Mr. Sloan. How do you do? He is the manager of the entire store. Hello. Perhaps I can help you, Miss White. I hope so. I'll do my best. It's about this thimble. Let's have a look at it, shall we? It's dented. Oh, my. And scratched. See here? Well, now it most assuredly is. If you'll simply take it back to any register in the gift department, we'll be happy to replace it with merchandise of equal value or issue a credit. If that's all... Mr. Sloan, I've already explained to your Mr. Armbruster here. I didn't purchase this in the gift department. Where, then? Now it begins... I was taken up to the ninth floor. Taken? If I may interrupt you right there. That's what's so difficult to understand, Miss White. What is? You see, we don't have a ninth floor. But that's ridiculous. As long as I've been with the store, which, by the way, is a considerable number of years... A considerable number. Well, I know what I know, Mr. Sloan. There's an old saying, those who were there know more than those who weren't. And I was taken up to the ninth floor, definitely. There's no question in my mind. I saw the numbers flash by, and then the elevator operator opened the door. Taken by whom? The express operator. And after that, he took me down again to this floor. Express, did you say? Yes, the express elevator. And I was waited on by a very odd woman. Is your receipt in your bag? My receipt? I didn't get a receipt. You see? I paid cash. I gave the woman a $20 bill and a $5 bill. Then I was given the thimble in this little velvet box here. Mm, it doesn't look like one of ours. Then I took the bag and... From the odd woman. She was odd. Anyone would say so. Can you be more specific? She had a very chic, tailored suit with her hair tied back tightly in a sort of bun. 
Mm, she seemed to know exactly what she was doing, so I'm sure she's also been with your company for a considerable number of years. And her name was? I don't know. You see? I didn't ask. All our employees are required to wear name badges, like Mr. Armbruster here. So all you'd have to do is glance at the lapel... Voila! And there's the name. I honestly don't think she had one. No, I'm sure. Just the tailored suit with a plain neckline, no jewelry. If you could give me something more to go on... I'm trying. Otherwise, without a proper receipt, I'm afraid... Like that woman. Which? She, she looked exactly like that woman over there. Where? Standing by the designer collections. The same outfit, same color. That's one of our newest designer suits. It hasn't even been put in the window yet. How did she... Wait. Yes? It not only looks like her, it is her. It is? The woman. The one who waited on me. She's standing right there. See her? Well, <clears throat> this will settle it then. Yes, it most certainly will. Miss, I wonder if you'd mind... She can't hear you. Mr. Armbruster, would you kindly ask her to come over here? With pleasure. Excuse me. Sorry. If you'll kindly step aside, I have to... You? Do you work here? I said... May we have a word with you, madam? This customer says she purchased a gift item from you earlier today. She refuses to answer. If you'll face me, please. My name is Sloan, and I'm the manager of this store. Where is your ID badge? I told you, she won't answer. She is not from any of my departments. My salespeople are all trained to be courteous, responsive. Are you deaf? Turn around and let me see your name. Oh, no! You still say this is the one who waited on you, Miss White? What in the world? What's the matter with you, Armbruster? Leading me on a wild goose chase. This is a mannequin. No! I could have sworn... Uh, of course it is. I knew that all along. A small jest, sir. A very small one. Only a mannequin, dressed for display in ladies' couture. Why, what do you say now, Miss White? A dummy. Not a sales girl at all. A mere dummy. I'm Bruce. What are you doing in ladies' lingerie? Sir, I'm waiting to see if our favorite customer, alleged customer... Miss White? You mean she's still here? In the ladies' lounge. I thought I told you to show her the door. She didn't feel well. She wanted to lie down. I thought it best to accommodate her. You never know about these crazies. Lawsuits, insurance claims... Oh, planes. all right. Let her rest. But send someone in to see how she's doing. It's almost six o'clock. Yes, sir. Miss Kiever? Yes. Well? M Mr. Armbruster? Well, how is she? Oh, Miss White. She'll be all right, Mr. Armbruster. She was feeling a bit faint. That's all. Uh, what about this, uh, this delusion of hers? Delusion? Uh, I really don't know, sir. We didn't talk much. Well, go in and talk to her now. I think she may have gone to sleep on the couch. Wake her up, then. Get her on her feet. We'll be closed in a few minutes, and I want her out of here. Post haste. Oh, I, I'll see what I can do. As soon as I ring up the sale, I... Now, Miss Kiever. Yes, sir. Tell her we're closing. She can come back tomorrow and we'll get her a replacement on her merchandise or a refund or, or anything she wants. I'll tell her, sir. What I'd like to give her is a bus ticket to any department store west of Cleveland. Preferably one in Chicago, Los Angeles, or Honolulu. Miss Kiever, did you hear me? Closing time. Yes. May I come in? Oh, yes, of course. How are you feeling? Mm, better. I must have dozed off. Oh, that's all right. You looked like you needed it. Mr. Armbruster wants to know how you are. I feel like such a fool. He must think I'm insane. No, mm, he doesn't. He and that manager and everyone else. Nobody thought anything. You just had a bad shopping day. I see it all the time. You know, it's strange. I didn't, really. 
You had what I came for, but...